Well, it's a banner week for Hawk and Audio. They finally released the Egan Matrix Eurorack module. This is an implementation of a 2DSP continuum similar to the Continuum Mini, only instead of having the fingerboard, it has CV inputs and analog inputs. A continuum has AES inputs, but the inclusion of analog inputs to be processed in a number of different ways on this module makes it really handy. Of course it has stereo outputs as well. Now you don't have to use a computer to use this module in any way, though you will need the editor if you want to download new firmware. You can play the module if you like also over MIDI. There's a TRS MIDI IO jacks Typically, you'll use those to connect up DIN MIDI devices through a DIN to TRS adapter, or you can play the module over USB, then it'll show up as a USB device on your computer. You'll need a MIDI host if you want to play this module without a computer. But our use case for this video is going to be playing the module through CV. Obviously, when you get your module, you're going to want to connect up the ribbon connector making sure that the minus 12 volt stripe is in the correct orientation on the module and on your rack. Put it in, power it up, and you should see on the LED display a user preset selection. This is where you'll view what your presets are and like continuums, the module can store up to 128 user presets. The module comes with 16 user presets loaded and there are over 550 system presets that are included on the module as well with more to come with every new release. If you want to see what your preset is, just press the rotary. In this case, the first preset is a super saw called saw blades. So the first thing we're going to want to do, of course, is we'll connect up our stereo outputs. And I'll also connect it up to a scope in case I want to use that. Maybe set that to the tuner. There's a little switch on the right of the stereo outputs that will let you set a minus 12 db line output to send to line devices or if you want to send the output back into a Eurorack input there is a 0 db Eurorack level a little switch inside can be set to which one you want to use and now we need to talk about playing the module next we'll calibrate the CV inputs to do that, press the 1, 2, 3, and 4 macrocontroller buttons at the same time. A 0 will appear, and then you're calibrated. I typically do this every time I move the module. Because this is, in effect, an implementation of a continuum on a Eurorack module, it uses continuum descriptions for these inputs. W on a continuum is typically a gate. When you press the fingerboard on a continuum, a note gates on, even though W might not be used in the preset itself, for the purposes of the module, we'll always want to gate our sounds. X is the continuous pitch on a continuum. That will be a one volt per octave input. Y is front to back motion on a continuum. Now some presets use it, some don't. You can connect that up. A lot of presets use it, and it'd be nice for you to be able to control Y through CV of some sort. And Z is your dynamic pressure on a continuum, your loudness or volume. And although Z can be used for other purposes in a preset, to start out, just think of it that way. W, you'll gate, X, one volt per octave pitch, and Z is some kind of voltage envelope, some kind of volume control that you're going to send in. For the purposes of this video, we're going to use an Arturia Keystep Pro. So I'll take the gate from that and connect it to my W input. Gate on the module is 1 volt or greater. X I will take from the pitch output of the Keystep Pro. I'll connect that to the 1 volt per octave X input, which is a minus 10 volt to plus 10 volt input, though typically the 1 volt per octave input is more like minus 8 to plus 8. Why? What I'm going to do is I have a dope for foot controller and I connected a continuous pedal to that and the output of that pedal I'll connect up to my Y in case I need to use Y. Though this could be any continuous CV output on your rig. And for Z I'm going to connect the velocity output 
of my Keystep Pro, though this could just as simply been the envelope from an envelope generator. X could be the output of a sequencer. Up to you what you want to do here. The key thing is for most presets, you're going to want to gate them on, provide an envelope of some sort, and provide a one volt per octave pitch. Y is optional, but you can connect it up. Now I should be able to play a note on my keyboard. <laughs> If I like, I can press the preset plus and minus buttons if I want to go to the next preset and play that. This one is called FM Dream Piano. Again, there are over 550 different presets that you can load up and play. Preset buttons can be held and the presets will continue scrolling up or down, but it's a lot easier to set your presets by holding an octave button and using the rotary. Now in addition, as we said, to these user presets, if I hold the octave button down and turn the rotary, I can go to my system preset categories, keyboard in this case, winds. There are some 10 different categories consult your quick start guide that gives you that list and you can also consult the full set of presets that will let you know exactly what's going on again press the rotary to see what the preset is in this case bagpipes and what I can do is if I press the octave plus button I can turn the rotary and move to presets within that category very easily so by using these two octave buttons in the rotary it lets you quickly move to whatever preset you like all right, let's bring that back down to my first user preset. Now let's talk about the macro controller inputs. One, two, three, and four. Presets may or may not use these for different kinds of control. They might be used to control, for example, the timbre of a preset, the cutoff of a filter, any one of a number of different things. Some presets use one or more. Some presets don't use any. And they can be used in any combination. They don't have to be used in sequence, one, two, three, and four. What I'll do for those is use some sliders, but you can use any CV input that you like. I'll connect up my sliders and And now I'm ready to fully control any preset. We're not going to use the audio inputs for this demo. We have octave buttons. If I play a note, I can press octave down to play down an octave. Press it again to play down two octaves. You can see a little LED is lit up underneath there. I can do the same thing going up an octave and up two octaves. If I press both octave plus and octave minus together, I go into the menu system. And the first thing I see in my menu system is attenuation. This is set to its max value, but I can set it to some lower value if I like. This allows you to set the basic output level of your module. There are other menu options. We won't go through too much of them. Here we have the analog input. Uh, if I need to use the analog inputs, I have to turn up that volume. Uh, there's rounding options on presets. And if you need to get to macro controller five or six, you can't do that through CV inputs, but you can on the menu system, you can set that value and change it with the rotary in real time if you like. By the way, any of these values can be set with MIDI CCs, but we're not talking about MIDI in this video. There are some other menu options, but we don't need to talk about those right now. Press octave plus and minus together and you're back. If I press a macro controller button, you'll see that each has a default numeric value when the preset is loaded. Those values can be changed with the rotary, if you like. They are offset values that get added to whatever the CV inputs are on your macro controller inputs. The W, X, Y, and Z buttons work in similar ways. There's default settings for those, and you can change those offsets with the rotary. One special thing you need to know with the buttons is if I press X, I'm going to get a numeric display. The first number is the MIDI note that is being played. And after this decimal point, the second number indicates 10 cent values to fine tune if you like. If I play a C on the keyboard, this is preset to 60. So if I like, I can set that to 61. And when I play a C, I'm now playing a C sharp. So 
This gives you an easy way to transpose by just changing your X value. Also, if you have a CV input that you want to scale correctly to a pitch, so let's say you played a CV input one volt per octave and the C that you played is really a little sharp. What you can do to tune that directly to what you want is press X and turn the rotary and that will fine tune in increments of 10 cents. So in this way, you can tune your module to other modules or tune other modules to this. The only thing, of course, you need to be aware of is the number is a MIDI note. In the manual, we have a table for MIDI notes that will make it easier for you, or you can look that up online. And that's basically all you need to know to use the module to begin with. One other tip is that when I press a macro controller, I'm going to see the default value that's loaded for that preset. And if I apply positive voltage offsets to that through my sliders, I can get to a point where I'll max them all out. You could see the maximum value of these is when you see a three dot pattern at the top. And if I bring them down to the minimum value, in other words, zero volts being applied as the offset to these macro controllers, I'll get back to my default values. So if I want to reduce these from the default value, I either have to apply negative voltage to them, or what I could do if I'd like is go in and set each one of these to its minimum value. And now when I use my controllers, they'll scale fully from zero to max value. Of course, what I've set here is not the default sound when that preset loads. If you're in some menu and you want to get back to preset display mode, just press an octave button. If you go to a new preset, any changes you've made to a previous preset will be lost unless you restore it to another user position, which could be the same user position. W, again, is a gate, one volt or greater. X is minus 10 to plus 10, though normally minus eight to plus eight, one volt per octave. Y is zero to five volt input. Z also is zero to five volt input. That's basically all you need to know to use the module. By the way, when I send CV into the module and gate notes on and off, I'm going to send the MPE MIDI representation of those notes out the MIDI output. So you basically get CV to MPE MIDI conversion out of this module without doing anything. You'll also notice a switch up here. If you do have a continuum voltage converter or a UCVC from Everton Technologies, you can set that switch to the I squared C setting. And then instead of MIDI out, you're going to get your CVC output and you'll be able to either through MIDI in or through CV play some other device directly through CV. But this I squared C only applies to the CVC and UCVC. It's not a general purpose I squared C output that you can program some other device to use in that manner. So that's all you need to know to get started using the module.